held electronically via Zoom on May 18th. 17th. 17th, that's, or that's yeah, um, 2020 at 4 p.m. Pursuant to section 13 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of the time and place and agenda of this meeting has been noticed by transmitting a copy of the notice to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, The Times, Trentonian, and by filing a copy with the Clerk of Princeton has been posted to the municipal website do I need to read the name of the website? www.princetonnj.gov slash meetings. Pursuant to Executive Order 107, due to the state of emergency in New Jersey regarding COVID-19, the coronavirus, notice that the declared state of emergency, all regular and special meetings of the Princeton Historic Preservation Commission will be held electronically via Zoom. I was transmitted to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, The Times, and filed with the clerk of Princeton. Such notices have been placed on the official bulletin board at the Princeton Municipal Complex and on the Princeton website and are to be maintained throughout the year. And by transmitting a copy of the same to the Princeton packet, town topics, the Times, Trentonian, and by filing a copy thereof with the clerk of Princeton. Would you like roll call? Yes, please. Ms. Capazzoli? Mr. Endersby? Present. Ms. Satterfield? Ms. Satterfield? Shirley? I don't know if she can hear us. We were talking to her before and she didn't respond. Oh, okay. I'll just note that she's present. Shirley? Um, Mr. Shore? Present. Mr. Shatskin, Ms. Campbell. Here. Ms. DeSanzo. Ms. Howard. Mr. Pyle. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Why don't we get Shirley some volume? Yeah, let me see if I can call her and let her know we can't hear her. Um, it's not just mute either. No, she's not muted. Shirley, can you hear us? She's got a hand up. Okay, I'm gonna call her. Link once for yes and twice for no. Okay. Brenna thinks we don't have a quorum without her hearing us and her phone is busy. <laughs> Let's see if we can send her, a, did someone send her a chat? I did, but. Okay. Oh, she's connecting to audio. There you okay. go. Right. I'm mute. Okay, she's, let's see if I can. I, I wonder why it was so oh. silent. Nobody was talking. Oh, <laughs> okay. So you're in attendance, very good. I'm a meeting without you. Well, well, glad you figured out the solution. Great. Okay. I'm just going for the agenda and I'm looking for it. Meeting agenda. Well, Brenna, you have to go before long. Do I read? I, I do. Yeah, but I, I let everybody know I was going to be a bit late. So. Uh, well, I just, oh, I see. Okay. I just thought maybe we should order the the uh, agenda according to your schedule. I think we should do just so we're not mm -hmm. slipping through it. So um, do we have to note that somehow that we're gonna skip down and do the approval of resolutions right away? Um, I guess we, I guess your statement there says that we're gonna go out of order and start with the resolution first. Nice how that works. <laughs> So um, everyone has seen a copy of it. Do we need to read it out loud into the record or can we just um, reference it and, and um, take a vote? I think you could reference it, but I do want to note that I did receive a message from the architect, Louisa Clayton, who felt that there were a few things on there that she would like some amendment to. 
Um, it has to do with item number two and three. She says that she does recall that there was a discussion about the shape of the rain garden and um, that she felt that, um, you know, because of the shape and that they're going to be piping it to the storm system, that they wanted to keep it there so they have more of a backyard. But she said um, perhaps what could be read within the resolution is in consultation with the land use engineer, the shape of the rain garden shall be reviewed and it and adjusted if possible to provide a less geometric shape. So she's wondering if the HPC would be comfortable with that wording. Um, for number three, she also says that there was a discussion about trees to shade the parking area. Um, she would also like this perhaps to be amended because she said that she did talk about it. Um, but there was actually no comment from HPC. The revised landscape plan shall incorporate a couple of smaller ornamental or shade trees in the uh, vicinity of the parking where possible. And I think the resolution also talks about any type of landscape changes would be reviewed administratively if I recall correctly. So um, if just to let the HPC know that those are her comments. What does anyone sense on that? Who was who was it? You, David, who was suggesting the the uh, trees around the the back of the property? I don't recall doing that. Maybe maybe it was Elizabeth. It was in the report. It talked about perhaps um, integrating some additional um, variety of landscapes so it's not just linear along the fence. I, I remember that now. Is this a house at 180 with John Street? Yes. Okay. And maybe it was Shirley that had a comment. I don't remember who had the comment on the on the shape that the of this land of uh, the um the water feature that's supposed to uh, address the, the water conditions. So that was also in my report, which talked about the fact that the, uh, the water is draining actually, I guess that's to the east corner, which is going towards the property owner. And she said, because they would like to keep as much of the rear yard, um, that's why they kind of put it there, even though that's not the low point. And I think that uh, the other comment that I had in there was that, you know, just concerned about runoff going towards the existing building and towards the neighbor's property. So typically when it's draining in the, you know, the drainage direction, which is positive, you usually want to put that as your lower point. Um, but again, she's saying that they will look at reconfiguring it if possible after talking with her civil engineer. Um, Elizabeth, um... On this and the on the other seemingly open issues, are these things which we can now um, uh, relegate to uh, to administrative decisions between you and Julie? Yes, you could. I, let me just go back and see if there was anything. I don't think that there was. I think because she brought that up, and there might not have been any type of leeway with it. Um, let's see. Uh, what about with those two items, we just say that that um, that it would be reviewed administratively for consideration. Is that easier? I think so. Okay. And, and do we do we have to vote on 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 the resolution at this point with that caveat? Yes. Yeah. And Elizabeth, I just wanted to make the comment I thought I heard in Louisa's comments that she wanted to consult with the land use engineer, not with her civil engineer, but with, that would be Jim Purcell. Hold on, let me see. Um, yes, with the land use engineer, yes. Yeah. So, Which means it would be um, Jim Purcell. Uh, where's the water coming from? Does it have anything to do with the water tower that used to be there? No, it's just a drainage on her property. Okay. So then um, the motion would be to approve it with these um, additional caveats that it's going to go to the town engineer and then there's a subcommittee ready to 
um, review it as needed? Um, not the, not a subcommittee, but the chair and myself. Would be with oh, right. The Sorry. Administrative yeah. review. Right. Administrative review. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, if, if that's the proposed resolution, let me make it. Okay. Second. Okay, I will um, do a roll call for that. Did we get a uh, second? I didn't. I didn't hear it, but okay. You were second, and Elric was made the motion. Oh, okay, fine, 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 fine. <laughs> um, Don't take you, didn't, you didn't put a question mark after your second, David. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Endersby. Yes. Miss Satterfield. Shirley, you got to unmute. You're still muted. No, I'm, okay. I'm okay. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Shore? Yes. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Brenna. So long. Quick. Okay, so next on the agenda, glasses back on. Sorry, guys. Elizabeth, do you have any announcements? Um, I guess one announcement I can make at this point is that um, we, Julie, myself, did attend the appeal for 3537 South Harrison Street, which was the Brook Brown application, which was um, the objectors were their neighbors, was her neighbor, and the zoning board actually kicked it back to HPC. Okay. They, they uh, are thinking perhaps she and the objectors might come to some type of amiable decision. We're not sure about that. Uh, she has, the, the latest scenario is that she has offered the, the neighbors to present an architectural plan to her, I believe the beginning of June, June 1st for her to consider. Um, wow. And at this point, we're not gonna do anything until they kind of run their course. Okay, that's that that's the question. way that, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the way that uh, Ed had recommended for us. Let them do what they have to, and we're not going to move ahead until they did that. I have a quick question about, uh, about Rook Brown's other project on Ewing Street. I, I actually stopped by there the other day because the garage has been torn down, the fence is gone, and I'd never seen the backyard. Um, and th there's a new sidewalk that's been introduced across the whole front of the property. The fence is gone. Was 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 that? Uh, does that not fall under our purview? That, that it's not. It's not in a recommended district, and it's not in a historic district. And that sidewalk, actually, I believe, and David, you could probably discuss it. But that was an agreement as part of her, uh, uh, as part of her approval. On that. David, is that correct? David, that's my recollection. Yeah. Okay. Well, she hasn't ruined the house yet. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> other announcements? Mm, that's all I have. Um, we do have the, the historical preservation annual conference coming up for those who want to do that virtual. I think it's three consecutive Thursdays, I believe, in June. Mm -hmm. uh, I have signed up for that, but... What is this? It's, you know, the, the uh, Historic Preservation Annual Conference that they have. Oh. It used to always be in person, but now it's virtual. So. Right. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's all I have. And I know, David Cohen, you had uh, mentioned the um, property over at, um, by the Institute, but I thought that I could, I could bring that up now. It's not an announcement, but it, right. it's, it, um, David had mentioned um the property, let's see, what was the address, David? It's 89. 89, Olden. I think, yeah. Right, yeah. Olden Lane. And I and, and I forgot about it until I was reading the minutes. And it states in there that um, I believe Elric, you, myself, and Tom Pyle were going to try to coordinate a site visit there, which, David, we haven't done. <laughs> Even though you said but, excellent. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to mention, Elizabeth, that Tom Pyle is in the attendees uh, room. So if you want to. Oh, in the public? He wants to bring him over. Sure. So remember. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Where is he? Well, that'll help. We can, we can um, review minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, could you bring him over? Yes, I can. Thank you. And then the, the other thing I just wanted to say about 89 Olden is that Lisa Seriusall, who was the member of the public who attended yes. that meeting and uh, sort of raised her concerns about that property, um, lives near there. And she was saying that there's been, you know, traffic in and out of the site and some little repairs and stuff that have been done. So she just wasn't sure whether some of the traffic had been members of the subcommittee coming to take a look at it. And that's what made her ask me to ask you to. Uh, okay, all right. So um, I think that uh, we do need to schedule something. I don't know what, I mean, I can reach out to the other two and see if we can coordinate something within a week or two, if that's okay, unless someone knows on their schedule that it's going to be difficult. I mentioned that, that when that so property came up, that my memory was that when I was in high school, um, the Oppenheimers lived there, and and I was said, and it was told that no, he lived at at Olden Manor, the um, the home of the president of of the institute. But I looked him up afterwards, and it seems to me it said that he he that when they gave his tenure. As president, it was several years before his death, and that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm still wondering whether or not it's possible that the Oppenheimers occupied that house at one point, which would give it greater historical significance. Right. right. Yeah. There's, a, um, there's an outbuilding with an apartment in it um, that, that may have been where there was another residents on the property to have two names there at the same time if that's mm -hmm. um i only know okay. that there were two two of his son and daughter were both at princeton high um concurrently with that'd be cool my period I, I, anyway maybe you could reach out to them elric through uh what's that and see if, see if they remember their address <laughs> I, well, I looked him. Up, I looked him up in one of the uh, directories and didn't find didn't find a, a home address. Oh, okay. And I looked to see where he had lived in Princeton, and the only place I came up with was was the institute. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's cool. Jermaine. So. Um, so are we, we finished on this topic for the moment? Yes. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, if we recognize that the Tom Pyle is here now, can we um, approve minutes? Yes. We would have a quorum again? Yes. All right, so let me just look at the agenda and see what. Looking to my agenda, I guess I got, it got small again. Let me double check. I need to download it again. What are the first set of minutes, Elizabeth? Okay, so the minutes are for April 19th. April 19th. And that's the only one we have. We're Excellent. Caught up. Two for some reason. Does anybody have any um, revisions or questions about the April 19th min minutes? Elizabeth, were any changes or Justin, were any changes sent to you directly? Not to me. No, I didn't receive any either. Okay. Um, is anyone uh, uh, ready to make a motion to approve them? So moved. Thank you. Second. 
I'll, I'll, I'll second. Thank you. I'm not sure who's in, in the pecking order at this point. You can always be at the top. <laughs> um, so uh, do we, are we going to do roll call or just a, a voice or? Voice would be acceptable. All in favor? Okay. Aye. 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 Looks like it's unanimous. Okay. I guess for the tape, I should say anybody opposed. Yes. No um, objection. All right, thank you. Let me just take a look at the agenda again. Um. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to uh, bring in the applicant for the concept review as you review the agenda, if that's all right. That would be great, thank you. Okay, Glenn Frey, we're going to bring you in and promote you to a panelist. So just it takes a second. Glenn, could you put your video on please? So we, we don't have Ed, but this is a concept review, so we don't need to, to swear in the applicant. Correct. Glenn, can you hear us? Can you put on your video? him a chat. So, okay, there we go. Glenn, are you able to put on your video? Audio? Yeah, your video. video. Elizabeth, there's a uh, phone number too. Also calling in, I don't know if you want me to allow them to talk. I'm gonna ask Glenn if he is someone that is coming with him or not. Okay, I see. Glenn, can you hear me? I don't see the mute sign for um, Glenn. He should be able to talk. I know. Unless his microphone or something's off. He was having a little bit of problem joining in. So I know that he had, had some assistance. Um, let's see if I can do something else. Um, Glenn, we're at the concept review of the agenda, so we need to know if you can hear us. Do we have a telephone number? I have a phone. I could call and see if we can talk to uh, him on the phone. Let's see. Oh, you know what? He did give me a phone number. Here. 609-203-1680. Oh, sorry. I don't think I should probably be reading that out loud. I apologize. All right. Then you want to just dial it yourself or? Yeah. Let me just. Elizabeth, that was the one that was on, um, but they seem to have uh, just, uh, off? yeah, just remove themselves. Okay. Let's see. What is he saying here? He sent me an email. What's he saying? I don't know what it says. Okay. 
Let me see if I can call him. Glenn, I'm going to try to call you. While you're doing that, a bird just flew into my house. Let me see if I can deal with that. Hello, birdie. Uh, Shirley, I was asking before when you couldn't hear us, what is the instrument on, on the wall behind you? Is, is it an instrument? No, the instruments are over on the other wall. This is a, a, a scoop that they used to scoop um, water with. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Drink, the drinking gourd, literally. Drinking gourd, yeah. But there's an instrument above it that's like a lyre, and then there's several instruments over on the other side. Very cool. Yeah. Thanks. By the way, while I was gone, Shirley, I uh, I read, finally got around to reading. Um, I hear my the, my people singing, and and I was I was surprised that several of the interviews. I mean, firstly, said there was no oral. She said there was no oral history done of the community before that one, and. But then several of the interviews which were quoted were ones that I did. Okay, so uh, um, Glenn is before. going to sign off, which he did now. Yeah, call me about to call me to get a chance. I'll talk to you about that. Um, so he's going to try to come back on by telephone, and then we'll try to bring him in that way. Not sure if he's going to have video, but he should have audio. Okay, so Glenn is going to sign back in by telephone because he was not able to get audio or video on whatever equipment he had before. So he's going to try to get in that way. And, and do you have a copies of the, of the materials that you sent? I couldn't, I, I saw the timber frame somehow. I lost it. I, I was out on Long Island when I reviewed like 30 something emails that came in the day before. And I do have lots of comments on it, but I don't actually have it in front of me. And the okay. and the site plan was upside down, which didn't help either. Yeah, that's the way it came in. It was I couldn't spin it around. I um, couldn't either. I photographed yeah. it, but that didn't really help. Justin, are you able to get it off the website? There's yes, that, I'm, yes, I can look for it. And then there's that color um, photo, you know, that color photograph of the open pavilion. Eric, check your email. I've just sent a copy of it to you off of my uh, email from Elizabeth. Okay, Glenn, I see your phone number. I'm going to try to promote you. Hold on, let's see. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Here's Brian. Let's see if we can get Brian in. Brian, we're bringing you in. Um, Brian's on mute. Okay, Brian, unmute yourself. And then, Glenn, I, I allowed you to speak. So hopefully you'll be able to speak. Hello? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? 
We can. Okay, that's me. I can hear. I can spot. I can speak, and I can hear you, but you can't see me, unfortunately. Unless there's a. So, um, Glenn, what we're going to do is, um, Dustin, who is the HPC recording secretary, is going to retrieve the survey plan you sent over and the um, the drawing that you sent as well, the open pavilion. So he's going to have that because I don't think that you're able to share since you're on the phone. Um, so okay. that way he'll bring it up and there can be a discussion about it. Yes, okay. okay. And, and I have that available. Uh, which one would you like to see first? Of uh, a site plan? Yes, and a description of what, what you're considering. Uh, uh, so this is 505 um, Mercer Road. Uh, it's the old dairy farm. It's the cow, the, the cattleman's house and the milk barn behind it. Uh, the large barn is not not my property. We have lived at 505 for 33 years and have been very good stewards of the property. Uh, we would like to build an open air auto pavilion, uh, which is shown in red there, uh, to keep the snow off the cars. We've lived here for 30 years with no garage. And we would like, after this last winter, we would like to get a little bit of protection. So we would like to build a post and beam, Elric will like this, a post and beam auto pavilion that matches the breezeway that connects our house to the milk barn. Uh, so we will have eight by eight posts with the corbel tops, and they will be about 12 feet on center as shown in the axonometric or the other drawing that can come up now. You can bring up the other drawing now, Justin. So what we wanna do is put this post and beam structure on an existing landscape foundation. It will have a roof, it'll have slate roof that matches the house and uh, the sides will be open and it will be stained dark brown to match some of the other pictures that I have sent you. And it'll be open to the, the tie beam level over the, over the opening on both, yes. both gables? Uh, no, there's uh, the back gable is actually going to have a center post, Elric. Uh, it's just the front opening will be the full span. Yes, but I'm a asking um, whether you're going to put siding from that from that horizontal member to the peak on the gables. I was going no, I was going to leave it open, but I, I would entertain the idea of of something that the house would have stucco in between all the timbers. Um, I'm not, I was thinking uh, that I would leave it open. Won't the cars be open to the elements if you left the sides open? It'll be open to wind, but it'll, it'll, it'll be like an open pavilion, yes. It'll still keep rain and snow off everything. And, and is your thought is there a possibility you might use it for entertaining on a rainy day or? Yeah, that's another thought. Yes, it's a pavilion that could be then used for uh, entertaining. Correct. Okay. And oh, tell me about the. Uh, tell me about the the the, the uh, other structure that you're that you're emulating. Um. There's photographs that I sent in, if Justin can bring those up. I didn't, uh, Glenn, I didn't see any photographs. Oh, they were in that package that I sent you. Um, it's, it's a breezeway connection, uh, Elric, that it's, a, it's like an open colonnade. 
that the farmer used to walk through to get from the house to the barn in the rain. Mr. Weigel. And it has, it has the double columns like that, about eight feet on center, and then uh, open sides as well. How wide is that by comparison to this structure? Uh, this structure is 24 feet wide total. The, the breezeway connection is about 12 feet wide, 10 to 12. Uh, is, I, 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 I have several comments, but, I, but my, my uh, fellow commission members may want more information before I offer my two cents. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm looking at the package and I don't see the photos either, but I feel like I've seen photos, but it may be just because those photos exist and I've seen them somewhere else. Um, but the passageway uh, that leads to the barn is what about three or four feet wide? I think that was all. No, 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 no. It's about eight, eight to ten feet wide inside. Ten feet wide, but twelve okay. feet wide on the outside. Okay, so that it, proportionally, it's not. It, 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 it's a, it's a similar, it's more similar than dissimilar. Yes, it is, and the slope of the roof will be the same. The slate shingles will be the same. The gutters and leaders will be the same copper, uh, so it's it's going to look as if it's been there forever. Mm -hmm. Question, question, please. Please. Um, I'm looking at the, the diagram here, and am I? Yeah. I'm searching for a driveway. Can I just be instructed where the driveway is? Is it the slightly angled parallel lines it, going to Parkside? Yeah, the driveway comes in off Parkside. We moved it okay. from Mercer to Parkside. All right. Um, and yeah, so it's two parallel lines that go up very to good. Parkside. And in, in terms of the proposed lot, is that an existing lot or is this a subdivision that you're proposing for some time later? Oh no, this um, the little. This is an existing lot, and we own the full lot. The little lot uh, that's next door to us used to have a house on it that was taken down. And then the guy that owns the big barn bought the lot. I, I, so it's, it's my own property. There's no subdivision. So you are the owner of the proposed lot as the triangular lot that's on the map here. Oh, right. That no triangular. Old. It's not a triangular lot. It's a, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sided a lot. It's lot 88. There's no subdivision in that lot. I think the confusion is that lot the, 89. The lot 89, which is labeled proposed lot. Yes. What is the status of lot 89, please? Uh, lot 89 is, um, lot 89 is currently owned by the person that owns lot 87. The owner of lot 87 bought lot 89. They have nothing to do with me. Or the carport. Now, um, well, that helps. Let me ask about the passageway. Is that something that was designed by Raleigh Gildersleeve at the same time? Yes, Raleigh. Yes, Raleigh Gild Gildersleeve designed the whole works, and we're matching that. Um, I I interviewed a woman fifty years ago who, with her husband, was sent over to. Oxford and Cambridge by Mr. Pine to study the buildings on the other side of the street. And among other buildings that Raleigh Gildersleeve did for Mr. Pine are were Upper and Lower Pine on Nassau Street, which had that right. exposed half timbered uh, framing. My sense is that Gildersleeve, like most architects of the era, was well aware of different um, uh, styles of architecture, including the colonial revival of the wings at Drumthwacket and the half-timbered English um, 
tutor structures that he did there. But I, I have to believe now that I hear that, the, that he came up with the original design that he was not particularly um, well versed in timber framing. Um, my first comment before learning that was that you that New Jersey has such an, a rich timber framing tradition, a, a far far more interesting than any of the other early colonies because of the two factors. One that it had stands of hardwood that survived all the way to the Civil War, which allowed for longer spans and 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 a more open plan than you'd find in New England or or the later on in Pennsylvania, et cetera. But, but, but there are, and I, and, and it, it's wonderful. And I do appreciate the fact that you are emulating an existing building and that you are emulating the style that, that once um, was adopted for the whole farm at, at, at Drumthwacket. I, I do have some questions, you know, as a preservationist, I would have urged you to look at other, um, mostly wagon houses, which are about the same dimensions that you're talking about, including the one that our former member, um, uh, Brown Little has right op opposite David Schurz on, on, uh, on 206. Um, this, is another, this is another way of looking at it, but, but structurally, I do have some concerns, which, um, which exist for this building and wouldn't for a building that was half its width. Um, if you could bring that um, the diagram back up, I could point out my my personal concerns. Okay. Okay. Twenty four by twenty four, by the way, is a is a, a standard um, ratio for wagon houses, and uh, which would have had two vehicles side by side. So there's precedent there as well. Um, here are, the thing, here are the concerns though. First of all, you have the existing foundation. That's, that's terrific. Um, I'm, I'm concerned, uh, uh, I'm particularly concerned about how the structure itself is attached to that foundation. Um, if we were doing a project like that, we would have a much heavier um, uh, sill, which could be where you could have um, bolts in the foundation that would go up through the 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 uh, the sill and into the structural members above that, or it could be attached to them in one fashion that, or another. That, that's that's correct. I'm working with Jim Huffman on this, oh, good. and that that brown base there is actually going to be a piece of three inch by twelve inch bluestone. Uh, so we're going to have uh, plenty of support, and that that is the correct way. That's the way they pin these posts up through the, the breezeway, well, but I, that's I trust, a good point. I trust Jim, but it, 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 and the reason why I opened what asked before whether or not the gables were gonna be enclosed is that with an open plan like this, um, we have had, we have seen buildings which have failed because the wind gets up inside the building. And maybe, yep. you know, that, that, that is obviously a, a, a a, a, a problem. Um, I, uh, would you infill those with stucco, Eric? No, I don't think you'd have to. I think you might. You could. You could. You could do that. Do, I, um, I could. Uh, there's precedent. There's precedent for brown horizontal siding, like a one by eight or a one by ten. Uh, well, I mean, it, because you're going to use this not only as a garage but as a, um, a, a space for entertainment. Um, the, you know the the framing would be exposed inside anyway. Um, my, well, I'd do it on both sides. I, yes, I would say it would be worse if it was just on one side. I I, I can think yeah, of yeah. one example where, where of a barn that we had half up and we didn't get to the second gable and the ra whole rafter system blew down. So I'm, I'm aware of it. Um, <laughs> okay. Alan, my business partner looked at this yesterday. He pointed out that the trusses you really only need a truss for the interior tie beam if you have an outside wall and you wouldn't, and this is not, if you did do it, if you did infill it, it would be odd to see a truss like this 
exposed. It's a, it's an interior um, means of stabilization for the for that central um, horizontal timber. Um, I see. I point out too that in New Jersey, and this probably you probably are dealing with precedent from the from the passageway, but we've probably been in a couple of thousand barns in New Jersey, and I've only seen three ridge poles in all that period of time. The rafters in New Jersey were butted. Um, however, the major, my major concern, and Alex's, is the lack of real bracing. Um, the, um, the, the, uh, visually, the gang posts are, are very attractive, but there's, there's no real bracing except for the three trusses and, and the, any stress coming from the, from the gable ends, it would, would be, I, I would ask Jim about that because I, I okay. something yeah. that, um, that is troubling. I, uh, I agree. I'll find out about that. Okay. And, and I, I'm not, you know, when you said I was going to recommend, um, you know, Jim, among other um, qualified engineers, because there are not a whole lot who who really are comfortable with timber framing. Um, so yeah. anyway, I'll be eager to eager to to uh, see. We we we're right. Now, we have a, a a major frame going together, new frame going together, at the at the barn company right now with a not, <laughs> where the the plate is ninety feet long. It's not a single piece. It's it's into four. But this is going down to DR and the it is quite they are wonder, wonderful frames to see I, I like the detail the de I presumably the rafter the tails are from the detail on the passageway yeah they're matching existing I, I'm sorry the photographs didn't get through I'll send those uh, I'll send those in to, to Elizabeth again I just sent a photograph of the of that passageway to Elizabeth that she wants to open it up and post it. It's, it's from when your house was on the market. It's a very good photograph. Oh, that's, that'll work. I don't know if Elizabeth can, can get that. Yeah, I'm looking, let me see if I can share this, hold on. Uh, let's see. Well, we're looking. Can I just ask a distance question, please? How far yep. is the structure from the street? The structure from the street is probably about eighty or uh, eighty or ninety feet. It's ninety. Okay. How tall is the structure? Uh, it's probably eight to the ridge. Eight, six, probably fourteen feet to the ridge. Fourteen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any luck, Elizabeth? I'm trying. Sorry. Oops. There it is. That's exact. That's a picture I sent uh, Elizabeth. Oh. Yeah. So the. You see the 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 columns, the uh, and then where the cars are is is the existing foundation that where the pavilion will be built. The, the distance between the ganged uh, posts there that's significantly wider than what we're showing on the on the on your drawing. Right, right. not significantly. It's uh, it's about another. It's about another foot wider here than they are on my on the new building. At, at the risk of of uh, breaking up the 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 symmetry in the two axes, I'm wondering whether or not on the side walls and the back wall, the the proportions that are shown here could be adopted, which would significantly um, improve the 
if, if you know if it's all pegged together, the distance would would um, be helpful. Oh, I could I could do it on the side in the back. Yes. And that's an example of the stucco uh, finish up that we see in the upper left, upper right hand corner. Up, up, upper right, that's on the house, yes. Okay. I, I have a feeling I interviewed one of the Weigel daughters um, 40 years ago or whatever. <laughs> Millie, Millie Weigel. About this, but um, I know I interviewed the Reynolds sisters who lived across the, the um, Mercer. And um, I may have that wrong, but but uh, uh, that would be in the oral history at Bamber at uh, at Updike Farm. Right. I have a question. Yep. Um, Glenn, um, what was your feeling or, or reason for why you what we see now doesn't have the um, the infill in that gable area we were talking about of like the white stucco, just um, I'm not challenging it. I just wanted to understand why you, why you chose not to, to do that. Uh, I just, I just thought, well, I'm actually quite honestly, David, I'm mixed on it 50, 50, <laughs> whether we should infill it or, <laughs> or leave it open. And uh -huh. I've, I've come to the conclusion that we'll leave it open for a while. We can always fill it in. If, if you're really concerned about snow, I, I suspect. We're yeah, the, I, like after this winter. winter. Yeah. <laughs> but going from having no garage to what you propose is going to be a huge change already. No kidding. <laughs> and David, you would know from. Well, experience. and I, we, we, we were originally always going to do a garage, but now that I think about it, uh, I, I think this is a better idea, the open, the open pavilion instead. Because if the if it was a real garage, it'd have to be all brick, and it would have. I was going to match one of the little outbuildings, and mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a better development. It's also less less expensive, so it's there's sort of a budget conscious here too. I think does the uh, does the if you're looking at the car in the background. That opening in the in the wall that you plan to use is that line on the same axis as the steps going down into that? Yes, it is. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that would occur where in the side wall? It's on the side wall. It's on one of my later drawings that I got, but uh, it's it's an axis. Yeah, it's right on axis, and it's a, just a pedestrian access from the house into the pavilion. Great. I thought I was going to come down on you with it like a ton of, ton of bricks, but I'm liking it. <laughs> Thanks, Elric. <laughs> well, I, didn't I tried to do it right. It was, but anyway, it was, it's, uh, <laughs> but I like, I was, I was concerned that it didn't seem, I, I didn't know how I was going to, um, how, how sympathetic it was to whatever was existing, but this um, this passageway is pretty convincing, and and the axis yeah. makes it more so. Yeah. Well, if you go go back to the site plan, you the the section uh, it looks as if that piece was pulled out off the breezeway between the house and the barn. If you look at the site plan, David. It's not up yet. Not up. There it is. But if you see the notch between the house and the barn, mm -hmm. the, the size of the pavilion is, is as if it was pulled away from that notch. Like we're playing Tetris. Playing what? Tetris. Do you know that computer game? It feels like it just slides right in there. Never mind. Oh, that's what it is then. Yeah, I don't know that game. As you can tell, I'm not very good at computers. <laughs> well, I'm gonna gonna put out some comments also. Um, I like the openness of it. I do like the um, the reference to the 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 historic style in the 
in the corbeling of the of the beams and or the posts and i think it's i think it's very nice i think um the openness actually if you don't enclose the ends and it looks a little more like a pavilion as well as a parking area i think actually kind of reflects the evolution of this property from um, working property to um, a state leisurely entertaining kind of property that you have now that it kind of it's the continuation of the story i, I, I like that it is a continuation yeah. yep um i don't have the view on let's see um uh let's see we've heard from elric um tom do you have any 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 additional comments no, I'm, I'm all right and shirley oh uh, did you have anything you wanted to suggest or add hello okay i think um do you um do you feel you've gotten the, the feedback you were needing from us in a concept review? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and file uh, a formal application. I would like to uh, meet or talk with Elric sometime before I put in the final submission. I'd be, I'd be very pleased to do so. Okay. Maybe we can, maybe we could um, meet at your place so we could so I could see the site. And I'll try and get Alex there too. That would that's that would be perfect. So let's let's do that sometime when you're in town. I know we're not supposed to know your number, but it's on the bottom of the screen here, so I just wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right. Anybody have anything else they want to add? Well, thank you very much for coming in. I think it's an exciting project. Thank you very much for your support, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Very good. Thank you, Glenn. Bye. All right, what was next? That's it, public comment, staff report, and members report. Do we have any members of the public? Uh, we have, I think that Michael Laplace was here. Let me just look to see. I don't know if he wants to speak or not. I don't think he wants to speak. I just heard him through the wall. <laughs> okay. Um, nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Is that that's I what I heard. <laughs> all right. I don't think there's anyone else. Is there Justin? No, there's not. Okay. All right. Then um, staff report. Is that what's up next? Right. Um, I think I pretty much talked about everything during the uh, announcements. So mm -hmm. I, I have nothing else. Anybody else have any business or comments or topics that they want to? Just a quick, quick uh, update. Um, I've actually been talking to uh, to um, uh, town topics about the possibility of rerunning uh, columns that I did 50 years ago for the packet and also the, the recollector. And um, with any luck, that'll start up this summer. Um, but we'll see if that mm -hmm. I can pull that. I did. I got 25 of them um, re-edited while I was away and. Um, so we'll see how that goes. That'll be a lot of fun to see yeah. them recirculating. Yeah, yeah there would be. So we'll see. Can we have a footnote that you're a member of the town's historic preservation commission for a long time? Uh, I've, got my, I've got my toe in the door, but we'll see how far I go. Uh, it was, uh, uh, it was, I was meeting specifically with one of the junior people between Bob Hillier and town topics. Mm -hmm. And Bob came into the conversation, and he seems uh, personally enthusiastic about it. So that that may be the that may be telling. That may be I'm all, I am also. I remember when I first started the history when I was on the historical society board in ninety ninety. Yeah, I used to come up the steps and get information from you and hit my head on that. Door. It was yeah, <laughs> I know. I, that ceiling. I still have <laughs> all the way around. Yeah. 
yeah, that, that was part of the ritual. Yeah. Thank you all. I guess we get to see each other in two more weeks, no? Correct. When, yes. is, the, when is the meeting, the university? Uh, uh, so that's course. June June 7th. Okay, three weeks. Which is, yep, which will be the two university projects. We're just gonna look at them both together because it just makes sense. And, and we're as and that starts at three and we'll go on till it's three o'clock. We'll starts at three. Yep. <laughs> Let's not do ten again. <laughs> Either that yep. have your food ready next to you. <laughs> so yeah, so that'll be starting at three o'clock. All right, very good. Any other business? Nope. Then it's like we're ready for a motion to adjourn. I know it's early. You don't want to leave us yet. Okay, there we go. I'll, I'll move. I'll second Elward. There you go. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. You guys be all opposed. <laughs> Anybody opposed? Silence. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you, good everybody. You all. Thank you. Thank you, David, for chairing. Oh, it was fun. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Bye, everyone. Bye.